December 26, 9.44am, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Hey there everyone, this is Danielle, playing some more Ace Attorney. Uh, this is the first trial segment of Turnabout Goodbyes, the Day 2 trial, so let's go. Karma? That's right, Manfred von Karma, he's the best prosecutor there is. He hasn't lost a case in his 40 year career. He's a god of prosecution, right? A god. Not a single case? He'll do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. Hmm. Sounds like someone else I know, Edgeworth. Hmm. You don't understand. I mean, he'll really do anything. Manfred von Karma is a man to be feared. It's quite a claim coming from someone who forges evidence. He taught me what it really means to prosecute. What? Just picture a prosecutor as vicious as me, multiplied by a factor of ten. Ugh. So, so was he your teacher then, Mr. Edgeworth? Something like that. And now he's trying to get you found guilty? What a creep. Oh wait, maybe he's planning on losing on purpose to help you out. Not a chance. He hasn't lost once in 40 years. 40 years. He's as ruthless as me times 20. That's pretty ruthless. Like I said, he's a god among prosecutors. I guess that's something like Mia was to me. Speaking of Mia... Um, Maya? Uh-huh. You could really be using Mia's help right now, don't you think? Oh. Ah, uh, I can't. Sorry, I tried. I really tried, but I couldn't reach. You couldn't reach? I think it's because I haven't been training. My powers are weak again. Oh man, what bad timing. I'm really sorry. I'll try my best. I hope so. What are you two whispering about? Oh, it's, it's nothing. Well, it's time. Let's head in. December 26, 10 a.m. District Court. Courtroom number three. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Von Karma, is the prosecution ready? Fool. Seriously think that I would stand here? Were I not completely prepared? Right, my apologies. Has even got the judge scared? Very well. Your opening statement, please. No, your op opening statement, please. <laughs> opening. <laughs> decisive evidence. A decisive witness. What else could possibly be required? Uh, nothing, of course. That should be fine. The prosecution may call its first witness. What's with this guy? Is he royalty or something? How am I supposed to fight against this? I call the detective in charge of this case. Detective Dick Gumshoe. Okay, Gumshoe's first. Let's see how this goes. Describe the incident. Now! Y yes sir! Detective Gumshoe looks nervous. Uh, please take a look at the map. The murder happened late last Christmas. Late Christmas Eve, around midnight. There was one boat in the very middle of the lake. There were two men on the boat. Now, this happened to be a woman camping here on the edge of the lake. At 12.10am, she heard two pistol shots. Then the boat started to move. It went towards the boat rental shop. Hmm. Overhead map added to the court record. Testify to the court about the arrest. Now! Well, wait, Mr. Von Karma? Yes? Actually, I'm the one that's supposed to be handling these proceedings. Wrong. There's only one thing you need to do here. You will slam down your gavel and say the word guilty. That is your role. Y yes of course, you're quite right. No, he's not! The arrest of Edgeworth. A man called into the station around 30 minutes after midnight. We headed to the scene of the crime as fast as we could. 
That's where we found Mr. Edgeworth. Now, I didn't suspect him of anything at all. But the next morning, a body was found in the lake. So we had to arrest Mr. Edgeworth. Hmm, I see. Very well. Begin your cross-examination, attorney. Now! I can't really remember what happens in these parts of the case, so I'm, I'm gonna probably press most things. Um, we'll see how we go. You received a call from a man? Uh, yep. You said there was a woman camping there. She was the one who heard the two gunshots, right? That woman and the man who called in the report are two different people, obviously. Different people? There were two witnesses. The testimonies were quite similar, however. Today I've summoned the woman who was camping. The one who was camping. A lot of heart. What happened next? Detective. We head to the scene of the crime as fast as we could. How long was it between receiving the report and your arrival at the lake? Uh, well, it says about three minutes. That's pretty fast. Our motto for the month is get there quick. Detective, you will refrain from casually revealing department secrets. Y yes, sir. Sorry, sir. I look forward to your next year's salary review. So much to look forward to these days. This is no time for dejected daydreaming. Continue. Y yes, sir. That's where we found Mr. Edgeworth. Hold it. What was Mr. Edgeworth like when you saw him then? Well, from what I saw, he looked pretty relaxed. Not like a murderer at all, really. Detective, the court requires your facts, not your opinion. How many years have you been on the force? Facts only, Detective. Hard, cold, objective facts. Y y yes sir. Man, he's got his share of objections. Why didn't you think he was suspicious? You should know. You have a deep, trusting relationship with the prosecutor. Detective, the court isn't interested in your musings. Deep, trusting, poppycock. I've never heard so many flippant comments from an active detective on the force. Mm. Mm. <laughs> detective Gumshoe doesn't look so good. Continue. Now. But, the next morning, a body was found in the lake. Did you find any clues on the body? A single bullet was recovered from the body. He was shot through the heart, fatally. Judge, here's the bullet. It didn't strike bone, so its shape is well preserved. Very well, the court accepts this bullet into evidence. Pistol bullet added to the court record. Why is that? Well, we found the murder weapon in the boat. The murder weapon? Pistol. Detective Gumshoe, that is a vital piece of information. Please revise your testimony. Right, sorry, Your Honor. What about the pistol made it decisive evidence? He has the same evil laugh as Edgeworth. That was an evil laugh. Okay. <laughs> there were fingerprints on the pistol found in the boat. They were clear prints from Mr. Edgeworth's right hand. W what? Order, order. So Mr. Edgeworth's fingerprints were found on the murder weapon? Y yes, Your Honor. Judge. This is the weapon in question. Uh, accepted into evidence. Pistol added to the court record. 
Members of the court, we now have the pistol used in the murder and the bullet found in the body. Detective. Y y yes sir? Was the bullet found in the body fired from this pistol? Yes, the ballistic markings on the bullet match the pistol. Hmm. Hey Nick, what does he mean ballistic markings? Shocking. To imagine someone here does not know something as basic as ballistic markings. N Nick, he's glaring at me. Very well, I'll explain. Actually, Judge, you do it. Huh? M me? Um, ahem. Ballistic markings are like the fingerprints of a gun. The barrel leaves distinctive marks on each bullet it fires. You can examine these ballistic fingerprints to see which gun fired the shot. <laughs> it's quite accurate. Indeed. I need to get an image. Boop. Wow, that's tiny. It probably didn't work. Doesn't matter anyway. Indeed. This leads to one inevitable conclusion. The bullet found in the victim's heart was, without a doubt, fired from this pistol. This pistol, which, as you may recall, was covered with the defendant's own fingerprints. But order, order! This is bad. This makes it look like Edgeworth did it. Well, Judge. I'd say it's almost decisive, yes. Honestly, I could declare a verdict at this point. However, you wish to hear the witness speak, no doubt. Very well. I am somewhat fatigued, and so I will take a brief break. I will call my witness after the recess, which will last ten minutes. Judge. Y yes What are you doing? A ten minute recess. Now! But, but wait, I... Just bang your flimsy gavel and get on with it, man. Y yes Ahem. This court will take a ten minute recess. Who's running this court anyway? December 26, 11.09am, District Court, Defendant, Lobby, Number 2. Edgeworth, what's going on here? Your fingerprints were on the murder weapon? Uh, hmm. And that foggy photo makes one thing clear. The only one who could have shot that man was the person in the photo. True. Was that you in the boat? Yes, it was me. What? But you must believe me, I didn't shoot him. Th then who did? I don't know. You don't know? Weren't you right there? I heard a gunshot from very close by. Then, the other man fell from the boat. I can't say why, but... I thought at the time that he had shot himself. Y you mean it was a suicide? That's the only explanation I can come up with. Huh. I'm not going to convince anyone of that. Say, Maya. Huh? W what Any progress with Mia? Oh. Sorry, it's no good. Ugh. I know. I'm no good for anything, am I, Nick? If I can't call my sister, I might as well not be here, right? No, of course not. I need you here. I can see you're always trying to help out. Even if you don't actually help, it's the thought that counts, right? Oh, Phoenix. You're so bad at this. It's okay, Nick. You don't have to make me feel better. I don't know anything about trials or defense. What's more, I'm a spirit medium who can't even contact spirits. Oh, everyone has their off days. I mean, I've just been getting lucky lately. But you never know when my luck is gonna run out. Really? Whoa, whoa, right. Don't jinx this case any more than it already is. It's bad for my heart. Oh, oh, s sorry. Whoops. Court is back in session. Mr. Von Karma, call your witness. Yes. Will Ms. Lotta Hart take the stand?
lot of heart, you're a research student at a university. That I am. Good. Begin by telling us what you saw the night of the incident. And don't add anything trivial or subjective. Understand? Y'all need to learn some manners. Understand? Y yeah, I understand, I understand. Uh, very well. Testimony, please. Witnesses account. It was Christmas Eve, just after midnight, I reckon. I was in my car. I heard this bang come up from the lake. When I looked out the window, I saw two gents in a boat. Then there was another bang. There wasn't nary a thing on the lake but that boat. Enough. Huh? Judge. She happened to take a photo of the incident. This is that photo, accepted as evidence. But, well, this is a surprise. This looks like the very moment of the murder. Order. I will remove people from this courtroom if I do not have order immediately. As the witness testified, she looked at the lake when she heard the shot. There were no other boats on that lake. So, the man in the boat with the victim must have been the one who shot him. Yes, it was the defendant, Miles Edgeworth. Order, 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 I will have order. Well, Judge. The evidence is decisive. I have very little doubt about this case. Very well, this court finds the defendant. But wait, Your Honor. I haven't even cross-examined- I haven't cross-examined the witness yet. Cross-examination? We have photographic proof. What question can there possibly be? This photo is worth a thousand words, words and they all read guilty. You lose. Or, do you claim to have found a contradiction in her testimony? Very well, if you have to, you may cross-examine the witness. You will only flounder and ask meaningless questions. You will fail to find anything. And then, I will have you held in contempt of court. Uh, Nick? Contempt? Contempt of court, you know? I, I guess I understand. Well, what are you gonna do? Do you really think there was a contradiction with the facts in her testimony? I think I noticed one little thing. Wow, I'm impressed, Nick. I didn't notice anything. Right, let's take him on. Y yeah, I've got a bad feeling about this. I understand. I will cross-examine the witness. <laughs> Very well. I pray for your sake, this isn't a waste of time. Okay, let's see. Technically, like, it wasn't Christmas Eve just after midnight, it was Christmas Day, but that's not a useful objection to make, as you might expect. Are you sure about that? Yeah, sure as a country gal can be. Sounds pretty sure. How come you're so sure? Well, heck, I scanned the whole lake. Scanned the whole lake? It almost sounds like she was more interested in the lake than the boat. Miss Hart, you... Mr. Wright, the witness has answered the question in full. No need for further questions. Objection sustained. Uh, uh, that's what I'm... Sustained. Y yes of course. Oh, great. What am I supposed to do now? Th there weren't any contradictions in there. Sorry, Nick. Only my sister were here. I might as well take this hard. Clearly see the two men. Just look at the picture. Clear enough for you? Uh oh. 
Wait a second. I wasn't asking about the, you about the photo. I was asking if you saw the two men. Uh, yeah, well, of course. Witnesses testified that she saw them. There's also a photo. You'd best look elsewhere for your precious contradictions. He jumped in quick. He's hiding something. Were you watching the very moment the shot rang out? Well, yeah, sure. You're asking meaningless questions. Meaningless. Contradictions, Mr. Wright, not meaningless babble. On Karma, I think I hate you. He's trying to keep you from talking to the witness. To what end? Just after midnight, you say. In other words, it was no longer Christmas Eve, but Christmas Day. Huh? Uh, yeah, well, yes. I know you want to find contradictions, but really. Hmm. I hope your next contradiction is a little more relevant to the trial. Witness, continue your testimony. Why were you camping there anyway? I'm a research student at my university. I was taking pictures using my research. What research? This all sounds suspicious. Miss Hart, could you be more specific about your research? What does the witness's motive in camping by the lake have to do with this case? The answer is nothing. I object to this line of questioning. Objection sustained. Wait, 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 wait now I'm the one who says that. Well then say it already. Objection sustained. Thanks for nothing, Your Honor. Enough. I think we've heard all we need to hear, Mr. Wright. It seems you were unable to find a contradiction in the testimony worth noting. But, but, Your Honor... You keep your promise. Mr. Wright, I'm afraid that I will have to penalise any further outbursts by holding you in contempt of court. And if that happens, you'll have to leave the courtroom immediately. Understood? Uh, uh-huh. Nick, what is testimony is fishy, Nick, real fishy. I know what you mean, but if I can't say anything, what can I do? I believe we've covered the evidence sufficiently to make a decision. Then pass your judgement. Very well. Mr. Miles Edgeworth, please take the stand. H who was that? It, it was me! Hiya? Is something wrong? D do you need to use the facilities? No, I do not. Lot of heart. Your testimony stinks. It's unclear whether you were actually looking at the lake. It's highly doubtful you actually saw Mr. Edgeworth. Tell us the truth. This is a matter of life or death. Potter, did you really clearly see Mr. Edgeworth that night? Did you see him fire that pistol? You will stand down. The court does not acknowledge the defense's outburst. Answer me, Lotta. What's the big idea? Treat me like some kind of criminal? I saw him. I swear it. I saw Edgeworth. Enough. Judge. Declare the defense in contempt of court. Y yes yes of course. I'm sorry, but you were warned. Guard, escort Mr. Wright out of the courtroom. He is in contempt of court and must leave. No. No! Wait! I, I was the one who made the outburst, Your Honor. Nick is innocent. Huh. What's the difference? All that remains is for the guilty verdict to be declared. Isn't that right, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Wrong. What? Did you hear what Miss Hart just said? She said she clearly saw Mr. Edgeworth. That was not in the testimony. That changes her testimony and I have a right to cross-examine her again. Order, 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 order. <laughs> You're in contempt of court. It's too late for wild claims. Judge, sustain my objection. I'm sorry, Mr. Von Karma, but I cannot. 
What? Ms. Lot of Heart has made a new testimony. The defense does have the right to exam cross-examine her again. But but he's in contempt of court. No, I am! If you're going to arrest someone, arrest me! Hmm. Very well. My FA. You will leave the courtroom immediately. Nick. I did what I could. You have to do the rest. Good luck. M Maya. I care not for this melodrama. Listen well, Mr. Wright. I do not tolerate badgering of my witnesses. I'm running out of time. I better find a contradiction in here or else. Mr. Wright, begin your cross-examination. That last statement. That's it? Uh-oh. I don't know if I can find anything in that. But I can't squander May Maya's effort efforts either. Yeah, it's one line of testimony. That's all you get. But I mean... How could you possibly tell it was Edgeworth from that, right? So... Got you. Got you, Miss Hart. Finally. What? You got what? Look at this photograph. <laughs> Look at this photograph. <laughs> the photo I took? The very same. There's something I want you to see in this photo. It's quite clearly visible. The fog, Miss Hart. So, so? This picture was taken with professional, high-quality film, correct? Yet even it could not capture the faces of the men on the boat. Yet you claim you saw Mr. Edgeworth. How? What? What? Mr. Wright has a point. That's why I told her not to say that in her testimony. Please. Yet now she has said it, Mr. Von Karma. How could you possibly see Mr. Edgeworth? Explain yourself. Miss Hart. What? Could you see the defendant that night? Uh, of course. I said I could and I meant I could. Please testify to the circumstances of your sighting. I did it. I finally found a hole in Von Karma's carefully vague testimony. How Edgeworth was seen. You're right. It was a cold night and the fog was thick as grits. So once I was finished setting up my camera, I got back in the car. Still, I brought my binoculars with me. When I heard that noise out on the lake, I looked out with my binoculars. See? No problem. Hmm. You used binoculars? Very well. You may begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. This one had better be good. Uh, I think I'm gonna press this one. Binoculars? Yeah, binoculars. Yesterday you mentioned that you were out looking for shooting stars, correct? Well, yeah. Wouldn't you need a telescope, not binoculars, for that? I've got doubts about your camera, too. Was that really take pictures of meteor showers? The camera is irrelevant to this case. You can't say that for certain. Hmm, Mr. Wright. Is the camera really relevant to this case? If you believe it is, you may continue with this line of questioning. But know this. If you find nothing with this, there will be consequences. Well, Mr. Wright, do you wish to press further about the camera? This is make it or break it time. The camera is of utmost importance, Your Honor. It is perhaps the key to this entire case. Therefore, I will continue my line of questioning. Wow, maybe I went a little overboard there. <laughs> Very well. Miss Hart, you will testify to the court about the camera. Yeah, yeah, I hear ya. The camera was set up to take pictures of a meteor shower. Hmm. Well, firstly, it faces the lake. Meteor showers are not going to be in, on the lake, they're going to be in the sky. So you should point the camera up. Or, you know, more up than that. The other problem is that meteor showers don't make a loud noise. So... Objection! 
You were photographing shooting stars? That's a lie. Sesu! I saw the camera you set up yesterday. It was pointed directly at the lake. You have to point a camera upwards to take photos of the stars, Miss Hart. Oof. <laughs> Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? The witness was not at the lake to photograph shooting stars, Your Honor. Well, well then, what exactly was she photographing? Your Honor, take a look at this. What was Miss Hart trying to photograph at the lake? Well, something that might be in the lake and that might make a loud noise is, uh... This one. <laughs> Miss Hart, this is what you were trying to photograph. What's this, a newspaper article? Gordy? Ah, the sighting at Gord, at Gord Lake. Well, Miss Hart? I, I never heard of no lake monster. You got proof or something? Let's see you prove that I was down at the lake trying to photograph this Gordy. I have it. Proof. Hmm. Intriguing. Very well. Let's see it. And no joking around this time, please. What is proof that the witness was trying to photograph Gordy, the lake monster? Um, uh, well, the fact is, Gordy makes a loud noise, and the camera's programmed to respond to loud noises, so... The proof, Ms. Hart, is your own camera. Your camera was set to take photos in response to loud noises, correct? Thus this photograph here, taken when a gun fired on the lake. And here, this article about Gordy. According to this article, Gordy made a loud noise when it emerged. Well, you were trying to photograph Gordy, weren't you? That's why you had set your camera to respond to loud noises. Order, order. I see. I too thought it was a little strange. Yeah, sure. Well, Miss Hart? You were camping there to try and take a photo of Gordy, weren't you? Yeah. Not bad. Are y'all always this... Are all y'all... All you... <laughs> Not bad. Are all you lawyers just that smart? So, smart boy, I was down there trying to photograph Gordy. You got me. So what? Huh? That don't change what I saw, does it? Exactly. What you just used several precious minutes of our time to prove is nothing more than that the witness is an idiot who thinks monsters exist. H hey! But as you so succinctly, succinctly said, so what? It changes nothing. Not true. You were hiding the whole thing about Gordy for some reason, I know it. But what it, what could it have been? Whatever it is, I'm getting to the bottom of this. Miss Hart, why did you hide the fact that you were searching for Gordy from the court? Please revise your testimony. Right, fine, I'll testify. It won't change nothing, though. It won't change nothing, though. There we go. Yeah. Something will change. It has to. I'm gonna and I'm gonna spot it. Mm. What does it do, Testability? Actually, I'm not a research student at a university. I'm an investigative photographer. Imagine what a scoop it'd be if I got a picture of that monster. That's why I was camping out by the lake. But that's all I was hiding. When I heard the bang, I looked right straight out at that lake. There wasn't much else to look at, so I just watched that boat the whole time. Then I saw a flash near one of the men's hands, and I heard another gunshot. I was looking right at that boat the whole time, crossed my heart, and hoped to fry. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. The witness's testimony is unchanged from before. Whether she's a research student or a photographer has no bearing on this case. There is no need to waste more of our time with another pointless cross-examination. Uh, hmm. I claim the defense's right to cross-examine the witness, Your Honor. When Karma's up to something, I know it. He doesn't want me to cross-examine her because... Why? Was there a contradiction? Very well, you may begin the cross-examination. You seem sure of yourself. You must have something in mind. Ha. Huh. That would be a first. Haha, <laughs> very funny. You understand this is your last chance to cross-examination, Mr. Wright. If there is no problem with the testimony this time, we will let the witness leave. I will announce my verdict at that time, Mr. Wright. Understood? 
Yeah, sure, Anna. Why is it always our last chance at a cross-examination? Like, obviously there's more going on here, and we've pulled up, pulled up various threads all this time to get to this point. There have been problems with all the testimonies. There's probably a problem with this one. <laughs> I mean, I know, I know it gives it more drama, but whatever. There wasn't much else to look at? Yep. I don't know. She heard a bang and she thought Gordy was out there. I kind of doubt she's wasting any time looking at a boat. Why? What did I do now? Why are you giving me that look for? Definitely suspicious. Maybe it's time for some evidence. Witness, continue. Hold your hush puppies, Pops. I'm getting there. Well, logically she'd be looking for Gordy, right? She wouldn't just stare at the boat. She would be searching the whole lake to try to find where Gordy is because she's looking for Gordy. <laughs> Miss Hart. Are you really looking at that boat? Well, what's with you? Of course I was looking at it. It was the only thing out there. Any normal person would be looking at it. I agree. Any normal person would. But you are far from normal. <laughs> Jinx, that's so rude. Why would you say that? Rude. What? Y'all want to step over here and say that? You were camping at the lake to take a picture of Gordy. Think about it. What would you do if you heard a loud noise? You'd be scanning the lake for any sign of Gordy, that's what. You wouldn't give the boat a second thought. Order, continue, Mr. Wright. You testified that you were watching the boat through binoculars. However, you wouldn't need binoculars to watch that boat. You needed them to search for Gordy, and that's what you were doing. Well? Hmm. Well, now that y'all mention it, I did sort of take my binoculars and kind of scan the lake a bit. I mean, Gordy might be out there, you- not nah. and all? <laughs> no. And all? But Miss Hart, are you saying that you were not watching the boat then? S sorry, y'all. I wasn't fibbing, really. I was just- I thought, you know, I could be witness to a murder and all. I kind of got excited. I was sure I was watching that boat. Till now. This... This is totally uncalled for. But, but hey! You got the photograph! You got proof! Hmm. Still, we can't see who is shooting who in this. Right, right. That's why I took this photo and... Witness. That's enough. You've had a long day. Shut your pie hole. Sh shut my what? What was she gonna say? Shoot the photo and what? Wait a second. She even had the photograph to prove it. But you really can't tell from the photo who is shooting. That's why she said she's going to enlarge the photo. She said it'll drop the quality of mine, but she'll let us see who's who. She enlarged that photo. Why won't Von Karma let her show it? I've got a hunch. I bet that enlarged photo shows something bad for Von Karma. This is my chance. If I'm wrong though, it'll mean prison for Edgeworth. Or worse. What should I do? Yeah, let's see the enlargement. Miss Hart, look at this photograph. <laughs> look at this photograph. <laughs> they seem to say that a lot in this case. <laughs> you enlarged this photograph, did you not? Yeah, I did. Why has that enlargement not been presented to the court? Be because it does not exist. What are y'all talking about? You were the one who told me not to show it in court in the first place. You old fool. What's the meaning of this, Mr. Von Karma? Uh, mm, Miss Hart. Show the photo to the court. Show us the enlargement. Prosecution objects to the submission of this evidence. Objection denied. The witness will show the enlargement to the court. Here it is. 
so weird that the enlargement has so much more detail in it. <laughs> hmm, we still cannot see who is firing in this. It could be the defendant, or maybe it's not. Regardless, I'll accept this as evidence. Lake photo added to the court record. Happy now, Mr. Wright? Hmm. There has to be something. You asked for the enlargement. You got the enlargement. And little good it has done any of this. That's why I requested she not show it. Hmm. I suppose this means that the cross-examination is over. Obviously. Then I would like to close the cross-examination of Ms. Lotterheart. And none too soon. That was a flagrant waste of my time. Mr. Von Karma, do you have anything to add? I stated everything I needed to when this trial began. Decisive evidence. A decisive witness. What else could possibly be required? Well, we don't have a decisive witness anymore. Like, she didn't actually see the crime at all. And we haven't brought in the other witness, so... Nothing, of course. I believe it is time for you to declare my verdict. Wait, it's not supposed to go like this! There has to be a clue in this photo somewhere. This is bad, real bad. What should I do? Your Honor, there is something decidedly strange with this enlargement. W what might that be? Mr. Wright. Uh, what it is, by the way, if you look at the enlargement, you can see that the gun is being held by somebody in a trench coat in their left hand. But if you look at the gun itself, the fingerprints are from Edgeworth's right hand. It will show the court what you mean. What about this photo is strange? Okay, here goes nothing. I'll show the judge what's strange about this photo. Here you runner. The shooter? I'm not sure I understand. What about the shooter is strange? Look at the hand holding the pistol, Your Honor. The hand? That hand directly contradicts another piece of evidence. This man's left hand does what? <laughs> I love how they're clarifying that it's a left hand in the dialogue. <laughs> Let me show you. I'll show you the evidence that left hand contradicts. The evidence is clear. The man in this photograph is holding that pistol in his left hand. However, Prints on the murder weapon were from Edgeworth's right hand. Ergo, the man shooting the pistol in this photograph is not Mr. Edgeworth. I mean, that's not a really logical conclusion. Like, he could have swapped to his other hand at some point. Now that everyone in the courtroom has quieted down, I would like to reconvene the court of law this court of law. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. You have given us def definitive proof today. We now know that it was not Mr. Edgeworth who fired the pistol that night. However, this leaves us with a rather large problem. If Mr. Edgeworth didn't do it, then who shot our victim? Precisely. As we have seen, there were no other people on the lake that night. Who but the defendant could have shot the victim? There's only one explanation remaining. The man who shot the victim was none other than... The victim himself. Order, order. So, you were saying that the victim committed suicide? Yes, Your Honor. I can think of no other explanation. Hmm. Indeed, that does seem to be the only remaining option. I'm so very, very sorry, Mr. Wright. But suicide is out of the question. W what? An examination of the victim's wound reveals the distance at which he was shot. The distance? The victim was clearly shot from further than a meter away. A meter? That, that's three feet. I don't know if that's actually helpful. I don't know how much three feet is. Apparently it's a meter. <laughs> there is no way it could have been suicide. I mean, if you know that the victim was shot from far away, maybe someone who wasn't in a boat shot the victim from the shoreline? That's not what actually happened, but it's weird that no one ever mentions that as a possibility. 
Mr. Von Karma, are you sure of the accuracy of your data? Of course. I had already considered the possibility of suicide, you see. Autopsy report updated in the court record. Hmm. I see. Very well, allow me to state my opinion. Considering the situation, the shooter had to be the defendant, Mr. Edgeworth. However, the prints on the gun reveal that the shooter was not Mr. Edgeworth. This is a conundrum. Therefore, I would like to suspend proceedings for this trial for today. The court orders the defence and the prosecution to further investigate this matter. Understood? Yes, Your Honour. That is all. This court is adjourned. December 26, 1.15pm. District Court. Defendant Lobby Number 2. Whew, that was a close one. Hey, don't you have anything to say? No. I've yet to be declared innocent, right? Well, yeah, but... What happened out there in that lake, anyway? If we didn't commit suicide, then who? I shoot it was about a meter away, too. What? Don't give me that look. I did not kill him. I was just kidding around. Hmm. Look. I'm gonna go check on Maya. Oh. Right. What? Tell her something for me. What? Tell... Tell her to watch what she says in court. That's all. Would it kill you to just state how you really feel with thanks, Edgeworth? I requisitioned a transcript of Lotta's entire testimony. I thought it might give me some ammunition for the trial tomorrow. Of course, she didn't see the shooter, so the only part of her testimony that stood was the bang she heard. Lotta's deposition added to the court record. And that's the end of that section. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, next time, we're moving on to the investigation on day two of Turnabout Goodbyes. Uh, so I'm just going to save. There we go. And uh, that's it for now.